So the game I'm playing today is called Echo Jr. for the Sega Genesis. I have got a bit of a strange one for you guys today. So if you're a gamer of a certain age, you may recall a series published by Sega on the Genesis called Echo the Dolphin. Now, Echo the Dolphin is, for lack of a better term, a very unique game in which you play as a dolphin named Echo and you have to save all your friends from a random whirlpool that just showed up one day and stole all of them away. And later on, you find out that they were apparently kidnapped by aliens, and it, it's a very weird game, and the plot is just completely insane. But all you really need to know about Echo the Dolphin was that it was a really unique action-adventure sort of game, where you swim underwater, you could also jump out of the water if you uh, built up enough speed. Echo the Dolphin was another one of those games where Sega really tried to demonstrate the power of quote-unquote quote, blast processing on the Genesis, because it was possible to make Echo gain a lot of speed in that game. Echo was definitely fast as Frick, about as fast as Sonic, maybe even faster than him, actually. I'm not entirely sure how commercially successful Echo the Dolphin was at the time, but it did go on to become a bit of a cult classic on the Genesis. The original Echo came out in 1992, and it was later followed by a sequel in 94 called Echo the the Tides of Time, which somehow ended up being even more bizarre and left field than the first game. But then about a year later, in 1995, Novotrade, uh, the primary developers of the Echo games, because Sega did not develop the Echo games themselves, they only served as the publishers for the franchise, although Sega does technically own the IP rights to Echo. But in 1995, Novotrade released a third Echo game on the Genesis called Echo Jr. And I'm not entirely sure if Echo Jr. is meant to be part of the main Echo the Dolphin series, Part of me wants to believe that it's supposed to be some sort of spin-off to Echo, but in some ways, this game also kind of acts as a prequel to the entire Echo the Dolphin series. In this particular Echo game, you play as a younger version of Echo, and you're just hanging out with your other dolphin friends, whose names are Tara and Kitney. Tara is another dolphin that is similar to Echo. I believe she's supposed to be a bottlenose dolphin, which I'm pretty sure is what Echo is as well. And Kitney is a giant orca, and one day they collectively decide that they want to go and meet the big blue wise whale in the endless sea. But in order for them to even get a chance at meeting the big blue whale, they first have to collect a bunch of glyphs? which are basically these giant colorful crystals. Uh, you do actually see those crystals in the original Echo as well, but this time we have to collect 18 of them, because there's 18 levels in this game in total. And then Echo and his friends can go meet the big blue whale. Why exactly they want to go and meet him is not explained at all. <laughs> Yeah, the plot of Echo Jr. is heavily simplified compared to Echo the Dolphin, but it certainly makes a lot more sense than Echo the Dolphin's plot, because if you've ever played the original Echo, or if you've read like a, like a synopsis, or a synopsis, I should say, of Echo the Dolphin's plot, yeah, it's batshit crazy. <laughs> and the Tides of Time takes it a step further, for absolute sure. Now, why exactly am I choosing to play this Echo game in particular? Well, for one thing, I've already done a video on the original Echo the Dolphin, you may recall, if you are a longtime viewer of the channel. I did a video on the original Echo back in January of 2018. And I did say in that video that I wasn't actually going to be playing the other Echo games because I just wasn't interested at the time. However, earlier this year, I basically changed my mind about that because I do actually want to play the other two Echo games that came out on the Genesis, and I wanted to start with Echo Jr. first. While this may not be the weirdest game in the Echo trilogy on the Genesis, because the Tides of Time is definitely a lot more bizarre than this, I still wanted to showcase this particular Echo game regardless, because I feel like this is the one Echo game on the Genesis that... I don't really see too many people talking about. I feel like whenever people hear Echo the Dolphin mentioned, they usually think about either the original game or its sequel, The Tides of Time. 
but I almost never see anyone talk about Echo Jr. in particular. I do feel like this is one of the more obscure Echo games, and there probably is a good reason for that. Echo the Dolphin was notorious for being brutally difficult, and I guess in response to that, and I'm just guessing for the record because I don't know if this is actually why Novotrade decided to create this game in the first place, but... I'm guessing that Echo Jr. was probably a response to the insane difficulty of the first two Echo games. I guess Novotrade wanted to create a much more accessible Echo game that could be enjoyed by all ages, even though this game in particular, I'm pretty sure is mostly aimed at children. Unlike the original Echo, there's actually no enemies in this game whatsoever, and a lot of the levels, or a lot of the objectives that you're given in the levels, are actually quite easy to complete. What is interesting, though, is that there are more playable characters in this game than just Echo, because you could also play as Tara or Kidney in this game. So if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the first game in the Echo series that allowed you to play as more than one character. Although I could be wrong about that, because I never played the Tides of Time, but I'm pretty sure the Tides of Time only allowed you to play as Echo, if I remember correctly. So yeah, I just wanted to highlight this game today, because I just thought it was incredibly bizarre that it even exists in the first place. I don't really see too many people discussing this particular game, and I just wanted to show it off today, so that's pretty much it. That's the only reason why I'm choosing to play this. And also, I am going to be playing the Tides of Time after this. I do want to do a video on the Tides of Time. But I wanted to cover this particular game first, because I don't fully understand the purpose of this game. <laughs> I mean, I can understand if they wanted to try and make a more accessible Echo game, but it's also pretty obvious that this game was aimed specifically at really young kids, because I feel like it's a little too easy, especially since there's not even any enemies in the game, and there's also no breath meter as well, by the way. You don't need to worry about going up to the surface at any point, and there's no health bar either. Nothing in the game damages you at all. At most, when you collide with certain sea creatures, all they do is just bounce you back, but that's about it. So with that being said, I am going to get into the game here, we are going to press start, and we do get dropped into the game immediately as soon as we press start. This is the character select screen right here, you can play as either Echo, Tara, or Kitney. Uh, I don't know who exactly Tara and Kitney are though, I don't know if Tara is the, uh, the other dolphin, or if she's the, the giant orca. <laughs> I don't exactly know for sure, but you can select your character from this particular screen right here. All you have to do is just swim towards the other characters, and this little, uh, this little ring made out of bubbles will start orbiting the other character. And then in order to start the game, you just swim over to the right, and it'll drop you into the first level. Uh, I am just going to play as Echo for now, though. I will be showing off some of the other characters later on. I don't really understand what the differences are between the characters, though. I don't know if maybe Tara and Kitney can, like, swim a lot quicker? Because I did play the entirety of this game off-screen, because it is actually a really short game, but it seems like for the most part, the other characters are just mostly visual in terms of differences. I thought that maybe Tara was a lot faster, and maybe Kitney was a lot Lot slower because they're supposed to be an orca, but I don't know. It doesn't seem like there's any real differences between any of the characters. Also, if you're wondering what happens if you venture to the left side of the screen, uh, this is actually just a password select screen right here, or like a password screen that you can enter uh, whenever you complete a level. Like, much like the original Echo, Every single level in Echo Jr. has its own password that you can enter into this screen right here if you want to go to a specific level. That's not really going to matter to us all that much though, because I am going to try and beat the entire game in this video, so this is going to be a one part full playthrough. We don't really need any of that crap. Not, not only that, but I'm actually playing the Steam version of this game and I can just use save states, so whatever. Doesn't matter. The password for this screen, or the password for this level, is CSJ. Home C, use your sonar to find your friends and then use it to find the exit glyph. Indeed. Okay, so let's actually get going here. So, Echo Jr. does play a lot like Echo the Dolphin. You can use your sonar, which you could also do in the original game. You can build up a lot of speed by holding down, I think it would be the C button on a Genesis controller. But since I'm playing the Steam version of this game, I'm actually pressing the D key and using the arrow keys to, to move around as well. 
So yeah, you can still jump out of the water from time to time, like if you uh, get a massive burst of speed, as you can see, do a bunch of flips. Again, there's not really any point to doing that in this particular game, because as you can see, you don't have a health bar or a breath meter in this particular game. Now that being said, there are actually some difficulty options in this particular game. Like there is an easy, normal, and hard mode. I actually have it set to normal right now. I don't know if, if you set the game to hard mode, that actually enables the health and breath meter, or at the very least enables the breath meter. I don't really know, and to be honest, I don't really give too much of a crap about that. We're just gonna try and play the game normally, and I'll just show you guys how exactly this game works. Yeah, so, that pufferfish right there, we had to use our sonar on in order to discover him, I guess? So, what we need to do now is go and find the stingray. There's a stingray here that we also have to go and find. Yeah, you can also use your sonar in order to figure out which direction they're actually, like, located. Or, like, which part of the map they're located. So, we did actually discover all of our friends here. So, now what we gotta do is just go towards this glyph, use our sonar on it. The glyph shatters, apparently. And there we go, we actually obtained one of the glyphs. Yeah, so like I said, this is a very short game, and a lot of the levels are really easy to complete. We have 18 glyphs on this screen in total, which basically shows us how many levels we've completed. So, now we're gonna go to the Aqua Maze, sing at all the crystals with your sonar until none are left. Yeah, you know, uh, the kind of fun stuff that you can expect in an Echo game, like using your sonar to destroy a bunch of crystals. It's very fun. My idea of a fun time, indeed, yeah. And, and yeah, it, w what, what makes it even more fun is that this level is a literal maze. Perfect. Everything I wanted out of an Echo game. I mean, I know I might seem like a hypocrite complaining about uh, this game being too easy. When I actually... When I first played the original Echo the Dolphin on my channel a few years ago, I was like constantly whining about the game being way too difficult, because I do genuinely think Echo the Dolphin is way too difficult, at least for my liking. Uh, it is known for being a very difficult game. I at least appreciate the fact that they gave you infinite lives in that game, because holy crap, if there was a lives counter, I would have freaking lost it. But I mean, I also played this game in its entirety off-screen, and I just feel like this one in particular is way too easy. I mean, there's literally no enemies in this particular game at all, because I'm, I'm pretty sure that some of the fish that you encountered in the original Echo could actually damage you if you collided with them. Like, for instance, the crabs, the freaking crabs that I absolutely despise, uh, they actually appear in Echo Jr. as well, but they don't actually damage you anymore. They just knock you back when you uh, collide with them. So yeah, all the enemies that used to hurt you in the original Echo are actually still in this game, except they no longer hurt you. Again, I can understand if they were trying to make a more accessible version of Echo, but I feel like... I don't know, maybe they, made it a, maybe they made it a little too accessible? I do feel like if you were a fan of the old-school Echo games, or like the the original Echo games, like the... Like the original Echo and Echo the Tides of Time, if you enjoyed playing those particular games, then... I honestly don't think you're going to enjoy this one, because it's very clearly aimed at children. Again, the reason I'm showcasing it is just because I thought it was really weird. I actually didn't know originally that this Echo game existed, and not a lot of people seem to acknowledge that this Echo game exists, and I think that's for a good reason. Bay of Songs, more lost friends are waiting to be found. Okay, so we need to, uh, we need to find a, a baby seahorse here somewhere. I mean, I do like the fact that you can still interact with all these little fish, and they kind of just, like, bounce off of you. Okay, yeah, so this guy right here, using camouflage. Yep, there we go, we, we already found him, in particular. There we go. Yeah, it's not, it's not that difficult to find any of your friends, quote-unquote, in this, in this particular game here. Especially since you can use your sonar to, like, uh, sniff them out, essentially. Because if your sonar manages to detect something, then the wave will bounce off of whatever it's, it's managed to find. Like, for instance, uh, what is, what is this, what exactly is that creature called on the, the right side of the seahorse? I have no freaking idea, but I mean, we found it. Yeah, this, this creepy thing with, like, tendrils coming out of its mouth. 
I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't like the way that looks. It, it looks. It looks very creepy. The sea is still absolutely terrifying, even in this particular game designed for like six-year-olds. Yeah, the original Echo was definitely not designed for six-year-olds, though, because that game's freaking brutal, man. It's brutally difficult. Do not be fooled in the slightest. Like the original Echo, uh, it it will make you cry. It will legitimately make you cry, dude. Or rage quit, either one. Or maybe even both. I don't know about the Tides of Time in particular, though, because I never played that, and I do want to play that next. Seal Rocks, help the seal find his favorite toy. Yeah, indeed. So, so in this particular level right here... Oh yeah, that's a giant shark, by the way. Yeah, the sharks don't hurt you anymore, either. I'm pretty sure those sharks were also in the original game. Yeah, they're completely harmless now. I don't know if maybe if you enable hard mode, they do actually harm you. I don't, I don't exactly know. Or maybe all the objects are just more difficult to find. Uh, remember that ring for later, because that's actually going to be important for the next stage that we're going to play here. Uh, yeah, by the way, the crabs. Yeah, these are the crabs that I'm talking about. Look at these, look at these freaking assholes right here. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, they just kind of, they kind of cause you to bug out now. But yeah, they don't actually hurt you anymore. So what we have to do is that we need to move that rock out of the way. Also, I'm using swear words while playing, like, a kid's game, but whatever. If you've ever watched any of my videos, you already know how exactly my commentary is like, okay? I do swear from time to time, alright? I'm not- I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect person, okay? Never claim to be. Okay, so anyway... Yeah, so now that we have the little bouncy ball, we just need to move it over to the seal, which we can actually do by just using our sonar. And we can kind of just, like, spam this as many times as we want, pretty much. Just move it over to the seal. There we go. Give him a nice bouncy ball to play with. Just kind of balancing it on his nose, just uh, sending it into the air with his with his tail. Very nice indeed. He has a nice little little toy to play with now. Very good. Now we can just leave. Go through the ring. The ring does actually make like a, a musical note when you pass through it. Now we're gonna go on to the next level here, and I am actually gonna switch my character. Treasure caves, find the treasure, but watch out for the playful dolphins. They may steal your treasure. Oh, okay, so we're not actually gonna get introduced to this yet. Okay, I want to quickly change my character here, though, so we're gonna- we're gonna play as Tara now. There we go. A different, like, bottlenose dolphin. Again, I don't know what the difference is between Tara and Echo, or any of the other, like, characters, for that matter. I honestly have no clue. I don't see any difference between any of them. Gotta get the treasure here. Okay, so the other dolphins are probably gonna come along and steal my treasure, like they actually can in, in this particular level, which means I need to just, like, haul ass towards the exit, pretty much. Uh, I don't know if Kitney can also, like, like, uh, steal my crap as well. I don't know if he actually just did or not, but I, I trust absolutely no one anymore, so I'm trying, I'm trying to get the frick out, trying to find the glyph. Yeah, the glyph's right over here, and, uh, yeah, you- you put the treasure inside the glyph and then you destroy it? I don't understand in the slightest. Okay, here we go, the Sea of Music. Bring all the musical rings together to listen to the songs of the sea. Alright, th this time we're gonna use Kitney for this. I again, I'm just assuming this is Kitney. This could also be Terra. I have no freaking idea, or Tara, whatever. Yeah, so giant orca whale. <laughs> so we're gonna go and, uh, or not orca whale. I I'm pretty sure orcas are dolphins. Right? Because, I mean, the game refers to them as such. The game refers to, like, all the playable characters as dolphins. Okay, giant shark, I don't, I don't care about you. I don't care about you at all. Because you're not even- you're not even harmful to me anyway. Okay, so what we gotta do is that we need to find these, uh, rings. We need to find five rings here. Take them back to this particular area. Oh, okay, I guess you can just place them wherever you want. Alright, that's fine as well. Yeah, so, find all these rings. Place them into these little ring slots right here, I guess you could call them. The unfortunate part about this level... And, uh, keep in mind that there's actually more levels of this type, uh, later on in the game. Yes, we will actually need to be doing this again later on. Uh, yeah, get these sh shells out of the way here so we can actually go down to this level. Yeah, so the unfortunate thing about this is that if you manage to find more than one ring, you actually can't carry both of them at the same time. Like, you can only carry one ring at a time, which, uh, which sucks. It really does suck. Yeah, see? Like, when you, when you take one ring, it just replaces it with another, so, yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't like that at all. I really wish you were able to carry more than one ring at a time, but that's okay, because at least the other one will stay in the position that you left it in. 
So that's good at least. It doesn't like it doesn't like reset its position. There we go. Now I just need to find one last ring right here. Uh, I can use my sonar to sniff this one out. Uh, okay, it's not in that. Oh no, it is in this direction actually. Okay, it's over. It's over here somewhere. Uh, where is it exactly? Still over this way? Oh, I may need to. I may need to actually jump for this one. Yeah, hey, here we go. Uh, or or was I was I supposed to actually? Is it still over to the left? Yeah, it apparently is. Okay, it it may actually be down here. Is it? Uh, no. This is actually where I found the other one. Uh, oh god, where actually? Where actually is that ring? I don't even remember. Oh, right, I think I remember now. We need to jump again. We need to jump over these, uh, these rocks right here. Oh, God, okay. I don't know what this is, but it's working. It's working. Okay, yeah. We need to get this other ring right here. There we go. And then I think we just need to jump back over this way. Very nice indeed. There we go. Just jump right over the seal. Yeah, by the way, uh, this is... This area is actually connected directly to the previous level. So what is interesting about this game is that if you go into the options menu, there's actually a mode that you can enable called exploratory mode. And the exploratory mode... I, I don't know how exactly that didn't work, by the way. Uh, wait, hello? I need, why do I need to do it the, in the opposite direction? Okay, that's not what I that's not what I had to do when I played this level off screen. I was supposed to go forwards, but that time I I had to go backwards. Okay, that was really weird. Don't understand why that just changed suddenly, but there's a mode in this game called exploratory mode, which literally just allows you to explore all of the different areas in the game with no objectives whatsoever. So if you want to just explore all of the environments at your leisure without any stress whatsoever or any objectives to fulfill, then you can actually do that in this game. <laughs> yeah, if you don't actually want to play this game and you just want to go exploring, just kind of swimming around all the different environments, then you can do that if you want. And I found that really interesting because, I mean, this game came out in 1995 and I think most video games around this time didn't really give you the option to do that. The options menu also allows you to choose which level you want to start on, so it also kind of acts as a uh, level select screen in a way. Yeah, the game basically allows you to play it at your own pace. Like, if you don't even want to play the game and you just want to explore, you absolutely can. I just found that really fascinating, because not many games on the Genesis allow you to do that. In fact, Echo Jr. is the only game I can think of that allows you to do that. But anyway, Ocean Tag, you're it! Tag a friend with the snails, swim to the exit as fast as you can. Okay, so these levels can be kind of irritating at times, because, uh, yeah, you need to tag a dolphin, swim to the exit as fast as you can. The only issue with this is that, oftentimes, y your, your dolphin friends here are extremely fast, and oftentimes, they can also be found hanging out near the exit, which, by the way, the exit's literally right there, so that's it. That's, that's it for the level. We beat it. Yeah, so usually the way these tag levels work is that you need to tag another one of your dolphin friends, and then you just need to swim to the exit, like, find the glyph, and then just destroy the glyph, and then you can move on to the next level. But those levels are a lot more difficult than they look, because the dolphins are extremely fast, and oftentimes, they, they can be found hanging out near the exit. So they're just waiting for you at the exit, ready to basically, like, sabotage you. <laughs> yeah, those levels can be pretty annoying at times, but other than that, they're pretty easy. Like, if you just, if you just dash away as fast as you can, then you can beat them in, like, record time. The fish caves. Sing at the fish to chase them into the caves guarded by the seahorses. Okay, so maybe, maybe I, I do want to kind of play as Terra a little bit more, perhaps. There we go, just, just, uh, just switch to this character for now. Yeah, by the way, the jellyfish don't hurt you anymore either, because the jellyfish also came back. Yeah, so these fish right here, yeah, you gotta sing to them and get them into these caves that are being guarded by the seahorses right here. Yeah, so this entire level, this entire level just involves you pushing all the different fish into these, uh, these caves right here with your sonar. And that's literally the whole level, by the way. And the seahorses will just move out of the way when the, the fish are coming by. So they don't actually try to, uh, block you off at all. And not only that, but the fish can actually swim right through them. It's like they have no collision whatsoever, but like you can you can kind of tell like like I hope you're you guys are are like starting to realize uh, Who exactly like which kind of demographic this game was designed for cuz uh 
It's not for diehard Echo fans, that's for sure. It was definitely not designed for fans of, like, the, the original two games on the Genesis. Absolutely not. No, that's definitely not true. Okay, how exactly are you not going in there? Because that rock should not be blocking you off at all. But anyway, yeah, we, we got through it. There we go, we just need to find the glyph now. I think the glyph is up here. Yes, it is. There we go. That's it for that level. Very nice indeed. All right, what other sort of fun shenanigans are we gonna get up to in the next level? Turtle Islands. Mother Turtle lost her egg. Help bring the baby turtle back to her. Okay, so... This is when we start entering a different area known as the Volcanoes. Yeah, everything kind of just turns to gray. Like a lot of, like, gray rocks. A lot of grayscale here. Not entirely sure if I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it, honestly. But yeah, so what we gotta do here is, uh, we need to pick up this baby turtle. And I do believe there there is a way to pick him up. Because I do want to try and bring him back. Okay, yeah, here. Yeah, so we, we hold him in his mouth. Or, or our mouth, specifically. It kind of looks like I'm just biting his head off. That looks, uh, very bad. <laughs> but either way, uh, yeah, so we have to just take him back home to his, his turtle mom. And there we go. We, we got him back home, guys. That's, that's literally it. That's, that's the entire level. So I think the way that works is that I think you need to hold down the A button in order to, like, hold him in your mouth so you can actually take him over to his mom. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. You can also use your sonar to move him around, but that's very, uh, it, it's not efficient in the slightest. So you're better off just, like, like, grabbing him and taking him with you. Octopus Passage. Find all the swordfish. They may help you find the exit. Yeah, so now I think we actually are entering the volcano area right here. Yeah, these these rocks have a little bit more color to them, so I, I definitely appreciate that at least. Yeah, so we need to find all the swordfish. Oh yeah, there's there's a turtle mom, by the way. Yeah, she's just kind of kind of swimming along now, unless that's a different sea turtle, but I have no idea. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. I don't really give too much of a crap about that. Yeah, so we gotta we gotta try and find the uh, the other swordfish. So there's five swordfish to find in this particular area, and they will help you find the exit, which I do believe is actually at the bottom of the level. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, yeah, there. Actually, this is where the exit is located. Yeah, but the exit is being guarded by this octopus, so what you have to do is that you have to get all the swordfish. You have to, uh, try and find all the swordfish in this area so that they can convince the octopus to let you pass. Yeah, that's pretty much all you're doing in this particular level right here. Alright, there's just- there's just one more swordfish dude that I have to- that I have to try and find here. But they will- they will, uh, convince him to break down those, uh, those barriers. Yeah, he's, like, blocking himself off with those- with those little, uh, barriers made out of what I'm assuming is coral. Okay, I do know where this- where this last swordfish guy is. He's actually all the way down here. Gotta make a little bit of a detour. There we go. Gotta go this way, I'm pretty sure. Okay, yeah, he's right here. There we go. So now, we need to go back to the octopus. Yeah, the, the octopus is really not like the octopus in Echo the Dolphin, because there's also a giant octopus in at least a couple of the levels in the original Echo. Uh, and he feels a lot more animated than this particular one, or I guess he's- he is supposed to be, like, a lot- a lot friendlier, but... Yeah, as you can see, this octopus is completely static. It doesn't animate at all. Even though the giant- uh, oh, actually, never mind, it does animate. Oh, it doesn't start animating until you, like, free it. Okay, maybe the octopus was trapped, okay? Maybe- maybe that's what was going on. It was trapped and we had to set it free. It's not that he wasn't letting us pass, it's that he couldn't let us pass because he couldn't get out. Okay, that maybe that's an alternate explanation. Sure, whatever. <laughs> Doesn't even matter. The Enchanted Sea. You're it. Okay, this is another tag level. And, uh, yeah, okay, so we're gonna try and do this as fast as we can. Here's a nice little shipwreck, by the way, with a message in a bottle and everything. Okay, so where- where's- where's one of our friends here? I am gonna go back to playing as Echo in just a- just a moment. Okay, the shark is not our friend. The shark's not our friend at all. Uh, there's a silver ring right here that just makes a noise. I don't know what the point of it is. <laughs> yeah, so those rings can sometimes appear in the other levels as well. But they're not really useful for anything because you can't pick them up at all. But they do make little noises, like little little musical dings whenever you swim through them, so that's cool, I guess. Yeah, you guys were already hanging out at the end, so I just had to tag you and then that, that, was, that was just freaking it. Oh my god. Okay. 
Kidney was also, uh, hanging out there too. Yeah, I guess sometimes you can already find your dolphin friends hanging out near the, uh, the exit, so as soon as you tag them, you can just end the level immediately. <laughs> Mysterious Ridge. Find all the treasure, bring it to the treasure chest. Okay. So now we need to find the individual pieces of treasure. God. Alright, let's go on a little treasure hunt then. I'm gonna switch back to going, uh, to, to using Echo here. Alright. Gotta find all the pieces of treasure and bring them back to the chest. I believe the chest is all the way to the right. I think it's all the way on the right side of the, uh, of the level, if I'm not mistaken. But this is, a uh, yeah, here we go. Got a nice little chalice. Is that what they're called? I don't know. It, it, it's garbage. Let's say that's, that's what it is. It really is just, just like absolute trash. Okay, so I don't even know what the point of that of that little space is because it doesn't even seem like there's anything to to be found there. Okay, is there is there something else hiding all the way to the left? Like maybe not over over that way, but over over here. Yeah, there's a sea turtle again. Something just went flying because I just like knocked it out of the way. Uh, where where exactly is this piece of treasure? Hello? Got a giant lobster right here. It kind of dances around when you use your sonar on it. Okay, here it is. I found it. There we go. Nice little, uh, like, heart necklace right here. <laughs> I'm assuming this is all junk that the humans probably lost many, many an era ago. Perhaps. Uh, I do think we need to find five pieces in total. Yeah, this is the treasure chest right over here. It's all the way to the right side. And then I do think we need to find, uh, the glyph again after that. Okay, the last piece is apparently... All the way over here? Okay, not not in there, because that's just a dead end. Okay, it's it's down over here. Is it? Yeah, it's showing me. Oh yeah, this this other necklace right here. Okay. The pearl necklace. Okay, very nice. So now we just need to bring all of this stuff to the chest. And it it doesn't say anything about uh playful dolphins trying to trying to steal all my stuff here. But I know, I'm just I, I'd like to complete this level as fast as I possibly can anyway just on the off chance that they can still steal it. Oh, whatever. That level's done. Yeah, as you can see, we're already two-thirds of the way through the game, guys. Like, we're, we're starting to get really close to the end here. The Lagoon of Stonefish. Your friends are hiding. Can you find them? Yeah, so all the stonefish here are hiding inside the rocks. Uh, they're, they're basically camouflaged. There we go. Might as well play as Kitney for now. Yeah, so this level is actually not as difficult as it seems, because they are actually... They're relatively easy to find. Yeah, as a matter of fact, there's one of them right there. Yeah, so I guess they're not, because they're not completely camouflaged. You can actually, if you look very closely, you can, uh, you can see them pretty clearly. We need to find five of these guys right here. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, I really like this, this little shark right here. It's like a tiger shark or something. Oh yeah, one, one funny thing that you can do with your sonar, actually. If you use the sonar on the squids, they will actually shoot ink at you. <laughs> It's kind of, it is kind of funny. It's like you can basically make them poop themselves whenever you want. I don't know, it's just a funny little animation. There's not really, not really any use to it, but it's just, it's just kind of hilarious. Also, this eel right here is genuinely terrifying. Uh, yeah, I don't want to be hanging around him, uh, much longer than I already have. Yeah, even though none of the sea creatures in this game harm you anymore, they're still kind of terrifying, admittedly. <laughs> Especially that eel. I really like the, the way that the tiger shark looks, though. The tiger shark actually looks, like, like, genuinely pretty. I mean, look at him. Look at him, for goodness sakes. Just kind of swimming around mindlessly, pretty much. But, oh yeah, here's another another guy right over here. Okay, that's the third one. Uh, oh, there's apparently another one up this way, I think. Yeah, I actually just noticed him right now. Yeah, so these guys are not, are not that difficult to find, honestly. Especially if you can just spam your sonar. Yeah, you see the, the actual way of bounces off of them, which like, which pretty much tells you where exactly they are. Yeah, the icon in the upper left-hand corner will even flash, like, indicating that you did find them. There we go. That's all of them. Uh, okay, no, the, the glyph is not where the eel is located. I think it's actually up this way. It is. Yeah, I don't know why this glyph is a slightly different color, because it still has the same functionality as all the other glyphs. Whatever. Let's keep going. Dolphin ride. Tag a friend with the fish and swim to the exit as fast as you can. Okay. Let's let's actually freaking do this here then. Try to do this as fast as possible. Okay. So where's my friend? Where are all my friends at? Let me try and get some actual speed here. Yeah, look look how fast he is, dude. Like, I, I, again, I don't understand what the difference is between any of the characters in this game. I'm starting to think that they're purely aesthetic. But according to the screen, we do need to find Echo somewhere. 
Echo, Echo is swimming around somewhere in this environment. I don't know where the frick he is. I got some, I got some fish that I need to, that I need to give him. Oh wait, I, I saw him. I saw him. He's swimming over this way. Okay, go, go, go. Frick it. Oh my God, please. Oh God. Oh Lord. I think I got it. There we go. I actually managed to avoid him. Okay. Oh no, that's actually Tara. Okay, whatever. Whatever. Slightly different shading, but it's it's basically the same sprite, but with uh, slightly different shading. Whatever, it's fine. Vents of Pearl. Some oysters have pearl inside. You gotta find the hidden pearls. Uh, this one already has a hidden pearl right here. Very nice. We already found one. Uh, I think I will switch back to maybe Tara for now. Just because I want to try and use some of the other characters. There we go. Yeah, so... One thing that I do know about this particular level is that... Yeah, some of these some of these clams will contain pearls in them. Not all of them contain pearls though, like this one for instance. So I believe the clams that will open immediately as soon as you approach them, those are the ones that don't contain any pearls. So if the clam opens immediately, it won't contain a pearl. If it doesn't open immediately, then it does contain a pearl. You have to use your sonar in order to open it. Okay, that's that's not one. I mean, the empty clams can also be opened with your sonar as well, but usually you can open those particular uh, clams with, uh, or, or I guess the oysters. Is that what it said? I don't know, clam, oyster. Basically, if, if the oyster opens when you get near it, then it won't contain a pearl. But if it doesn't open immediately, then it does contain a pearl, and you need to use your sonar in order to actually open it and grab the pearl inside it. It does seem like the final pearl is somewhere down here? Yeah, over over this way, I believe. Uh, yet yeah, still, okay, keep keep going to the right. Don't, don't stop just yet. I do believe we need to go in this direction. And I'm thinking, okay, you gotta get this little spider out of the way here. He just kind of bounces around and just kind of annoys you. Here's another red ring. You fly through it and it makes a noise. Other than that, it doesn't really have a use to it. Uh, okay, it's none of these. I think it's this one. Indeed it is. Okay. Now we just need to find the glyph, and we'll be able to leave. Oh, the glyph's right here. There we go. Very nice indeed. There we go. Yeah, so most of these levels are basically just, like, scavenger hunts. Gotta, gotta find a whole bunch of items. Again, I don't know how much more difficult this would be if I was playing on hard mode, but I don't really care. Honestly. Seahorse Reef, baby seahorse is lost, we gotta find her mother. Okay, so this time this time you don't have to hatch him from an egg though. I do believe. Uh oh wait, I think I do I think I do remember where he is. He's down this way. Uh but where down this way? Hello? Oh god. I already don't remember. Okay, wait, my 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 radar bounced off of this. Bounced off of something over here. Yeah, something's giving off a signal. What exactly is it? Okay, down here. Spider, please. God, why is the spider so bouncy? Okay, I found him. He's right here. So I'm gonna see if I can try to pick him up. Uh, excuse me, don't don't glitch through him. Oh my god. Do I have to, like... Oh my god, why are there so many signals being sent back? Hang on. Hang on. No, 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 no. I don't wanna... I don't wanna bounce you around like that, dude. I wanna, like, grab you and put you in my mouth and bring you with me. Please and thank you. Okay, you know what? Fine. I'll just I'll I'll do this then. Okay, there we go. It it actually worked this time. There we go. It can be kind of finicky at times to actually try and grab him. Good lord. There we go. We got him at the very least. Yeah, that's that's his mother. Now we just need to go find the giant glyph. I think I can I can literally squeeze through these giant spiders right here. I don't even know if those are spiders, but whatever. Sea spiders? Are are those even a real thing? I don't freaking know, man. We're on the penultimate level of the game already. Melodic waters bring all the musical rings together again. Okay, maybe maybe this time we'll go with uh we'll go with How how long has it been since I played with Echo? A few levels, I feel. Sure, let's go with Echo again. Okay. Let's try to try to find all the uh, all the frigging God, the fish are just going flying, dude. What in the world? Got such bouncy fish here. Okay, yeah, got red rings. Gonna bring this one home with me. Or I have to bring it to a specific location. I think it's down over this way. There we go. Alright. Now I need to find, like, four more of these, and then we can we can continue on. Yeah, this is a much more wide-open area. There's also, like, a, a random copy of Echo over here for some reason. I don't really know why. 
because it's it barely even moves at all, like barely even animates. I don't really know why it's there. Okay, I hope that's bouncing off an actual ring that I can grab and not just the rings that I placed over here. Oh, wait, I, I saw something. There we- uh, no, that's the one I already grabbed, god dang it. Is it actually bouncing off of- oh wait, no, it's not actually bouncing off of that. Okay, it was bouncing off of something different. Okay, there there's something up this way. There's definitely something up this way. Something just creating bubbles over there. Uh, up up here? Yeah, okay. I, I actually, no, I do remember now. There's a ring all the way in the corner of the level, and I have no clue why. Don't know why it's placed all the way over there. That seems a little bit strange. There we go. I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of rings all the way to the left side as well that I have to go and grab. Yeah, there's, there's one right here. Again, this is one of those things where you can't hold on to multiple rings at a time. Which really sucks, because I wish I wish it would let you. That way you can place all the rings in at once, but unfortunately, it's not how this game operates. Okay, another ring all the way to the left here. Yeah, by the way, we're actually going back to that same area that we saw before, when we were trying to rescue uh, the, the baby seahorse. We're actually back in that area. So, it is interesting how some of these areas are, like, interconnected with each other. I do think that is actually kind of neat. Yeah, so some of the levels are technically part of the same area, and in some of those levels, you actually go have to go back to an area that you completed in a previous level in order to beat the next one. I'm not entirely sure how new that concept was at the time, because, I mean, there were... I, I do remember other games like Quake 2 incorporating that sort of, like, uh, level design, where in some cases you have to go back to previous areas in order to beat, like, specific missions? Or something along the lines of that? At least from what I can remember playing Quake 2 on my channel a couple years ago. I don't really know why I'm comparing this to Quake 2, because it's a very different game from this. But I'm just saying, like, the, the level design is kind of similar. Like, just- just kind of. Okay, where- where is the last ring? I didn't even realize I actually already have four rings. Okay, uh, something- something down here. Something else is down over this way. Oh, I see it. I see it. Give me that, please. Did I actually grab it? Yeah, I- I did, apparently. Okay. Now we just need to swim all the way back over here. Yeah, thank god it still allows you to, like, get a lot of speed as Echo. Yeah, the same, the same like, fast-paced gameplay as Echo the Dolphin, it's just, uh, it's been heavily simplified, pretty much. Okay, there we go. Yeah, because I don't think you can charge at all in this game, uh, anymore. Yeah, I think they removed that mechanic. Because you can charge in Echo the Dolphin and Echo the Tides of Time in order to, like, attack enemies. You actually can't do that in Echo Jr. I just realized that. They completely removed that mechanic. Yeah, because I think they just replaced it with the sonar, actually. Because that... Whatever button was dedicated to attacking in the other Echo games, it's now just been replaced with the sonar. So you have two buttons on the Genesis controller that do the exact same thing. Yeah, this is like an extremely simplified version of Echo, and honestly, I don't like it all that much. Meeting me is Big Blue is near. Find your two friends and lead them to the exit glyph. Okay. Gotta go find our, our friends here. Oh yeah, by the way, I just want to show you something kind of kind of funny here. If I go and play as Kitney now. So, you can still change your character in the final level right here. But the game doesn't actually correct for uh, you changing your character. Yeah, because you'll notice that there's actually an additional copy of Kitney here now. So yeah, you basically have like, like two Kitneys uh, just swimming around here. You got two Orcas. So I mean, if you wanna if you wanna make this make a lot more sense, then you just switch back to Echo, basically. There we go. This makes a lot more sense now. We just need to find Tara, and then we need to go to the exit glyph, and then we can just leave, and that's basically the end. Okay. Uh, how did I hit her all the way on the other side of this rock right here? Okay. Uh, I was not expecting that to work, but I mean, it works. So frick it. Whatever, man. Whatever. Okay, actually, there's this weird thing that I just want to show you guys, uh, just very quickly. So there's this weird crystal that suddenly appears in this level. You hit it with your sonar. It causes all these little, little glyphs to, like, break apart. And then they reform. And then they go back in the center. I don't exactly know what this thing is, or, like, what its purpose is. I have no freaking idea. I don't know if this is meant to be, like, some kind of puzzle or what- or whatnot, but, yeah, it's, uh... 
I don't know what the point of this is. It doesn't seem like you can really interact with it at all other than that. Just kind of breaks apart and makes like cool animations. That's that's about it though. You can still leave. You can still leave the area. It's not like a required thing for you to for you to like uh solve if you can even solve it. Yeah, now we're in the endless sea. So, we've made it to the endless sea right here. Got a giant uh big blue whale. Actually, you have two of them here. Yeah, the other one is completely static and does not move at all. <laughs> of, because of course it doesn't. Yeah, so he's he's right here actually, as you can see. So I think what we gotta do is that, yeah, we need to call him with our sonar. And then what he'll do is that he'll move up to the surface. He'll start blowing out water in just a moment. And that's actually it. Oh yeah, we need to actually use the sonar again before he starts blowing water. Yeah, so I'm assuming we're just talking to the the wise old whale. And then all the glyphs break apart after that. I don't know why exactly. This is also not explained. But then after that, the game is basically done. Like, we beat the entirety of Echo Jr. That's, that's it. That's the end of the game. Then there is this little cutscene that does play right here, though, where, yeah, they're just doing like a... doing a celebratory dance, pretty much. Just kind of, uh, yeah, they're, they are just moving on their own. I'm not, I'm not, uh, causing them to do this. Yeah, they just kind of, they just kind of celebrate, basically. And... that's pretty much it. There's not really anything else to see here. I mean, it's really nothing, nothing too special, honestly. Just kind of dance around for a little bit. And then there we go. That's the credits. That's it. We're, we're done. Echo Jr.'s done. <laughs> yeah, producer Ed en Enunziata? I'm pretty sure I'm not even pronouncing his last name correctly. But yeah, that is the same producer of uh, Echo the Dolphin and Echo the Tides of Time. So it's actually th the same producer. And like I said, this was developed by the same studio as well. This was made by Novotriad. It wasn't, uh, developed by, like, a third-party studio or anything. Like, Novotrade actually developed this game, and they were also the same people who made Echo the Dolphin and Tides of Tyam. Yeah, thanks for playing Echo Jr. And then after that, you press enter, and you just get booted back to the title screen. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. But there is actually something that I do want to show you guys here very quickly. So, if I press this uh, button here. Oh god, what what actually was was the button again? Because I don't remember. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so, if you press a specific button on the Genesis controller, you open up something called Parents Options. Yeah, this is another way that you can tell that this game was made for children, because they call it Parents Options. But this is where you can change the game mode from normal to exploratory. You can change the music on and off, uh, or turn the music on and off. Uh, Auto Sonar, which basically... Does that make it so that your sonar just gets used automatically? I don't really know. But yeah, you have difficulties like easy, normal, and hard. Again, I don't exactly know what this would change though. Yeah, you can go to a specific level if you want. If you want to go all the way to the technically the final level, then you absolutely can. So yeah. And I do believe those options are unlocked to you from the very beginning of the game. So you can just, you can select whichever level you want to start the game off with from like the very beginning. But I also want to direct your attention to this interesting little thing right here. Facts about dolphins. So, this is also kind of like an edutainment game in a way. Because if you want, you can actually open up the options menu, and there's an entire setting here where you can just learn real facts about dolphins. Again, it's so blatantly obvious that this game was designed for young kids, but I mean... Yeah, there are some actual facts about dolphins that you can look at in this particular mode right here. And I might as well go through all of them, because there's not too many of them to get through anyway. How do dolphins communicate? Dolphins whistle, groan, and click as a form of communication. The clicks resemble the sound of a grandfather clock. The sound energy is typically spread over a broad spectrum of frequencies, much of them well above the human range of hearing, but often a component of the clicks can be clearly heard by the human ear. Who are enemies of dolphins? Like people, dolphins encounter many enemies in the sea. These enemies vary from sharks to larger fish and even other dolphins. Unfortunately, humans are among the deadliest enemies to dolphins. Approximately how fast can dolphins swim? The dolphin propels itself through the water by means of its tail fluke only, not by means of its flippers, and can maintain speeds of up to 20 miles per hour over long distances. How long can dolphins go without air? 
All dolphins are able to remain submerged in the sea for much longer periods of time than a human. Bottlenose dolphin, like Echo, okay, I was right, Echo is a bottlenose dolphin, which inhabits shallow coastal waters, breeds, breathe several times a minute when swimming normally. Okay, it seems like there's uh, some typos here that they never fixed before releasing. Okay, I never actually noticed that before. Sometimes they will hold their breath for about six minutes. Deep diving dolphins and whales hold their breath for far longer, up to an hour. Are there particular areas in which dolphins are found? Common dolphins inhabit the open waters of all tropical and warm oceans. Have there been any cases of dolphins attacking humans? To this day, there has never been a report of a dolphin harming a human. In fact, the opposite is true. Dolphins have helped sailors in distress, fishermen in trouble, and swimmers who have lost their way back to shore. Yeah, when they say to this day, they mean like as of 1995, because that was the year this game came out, okay? Keep in mind that this game is like 25 years old. But as far as I know, there still hasn't been a report of a dolphin attacking a human even in 2021, so... Dolphins are pretty harmless for the most part. However, the motivation might be that dolphins enjoy pushing things. We only know about the times when they have pushed people toward a beach and saved them. We have no way of knowing if they have pushed someone in the opposite direction out to sea. Why do dolphins jump out of the water? Dolphins jump out of the water to get air, play, and increase their speed. In Oceanariums, dolphins jump as part of the natural behaviors they perform in show to display their size, grace, beauty, and intelligence to audiences. What do dolphins eat? Dolphins are primarily fish eaters. What is the texture of a dolphin's skin? If you're ever lucky enough to touch the skin of a live dolphin, you will notice how silky smooth it feels. It is slippery, but not slimy like that of a fish. Dolphin skin is known to shed rapidly. Studies show a dolphin sheds 12 layers of skin in a single day. How intelligent are dolphins? There is belief of high intelligence in dolphins. Current evidence reveals a capacity for learning and mimicry to mock someone or something. New and more sophisticated fields of study into dolphin thought and intelligence are being made to confirm this. Not entirely sure what kind of strides they would have made ever since, uh, you know, this game came out, because, again, Echo Jr. came out in the mid-90s. Okay, this is a really old game. They probably have made a lot of development on that by now. About how long will a baby dolphin stay with its parents? A calf will stay with its mother anywhere from 18 months to 2 years after birth. Wait, is that... Are baby dolphins also called calves? Really? I did not know that. Well, that's kind of interesting. Do dolphins like people? Yes. Dolphins have been known to help people in trouble, and there has never been any report of a dolphin harming a human. Do dolphins and humans communicate with each other? There is absolutely no evidence that would suggest dolphins have ESP, except for Echo, and they cannot telepathically understand human thoughts and moods. How many kinds of dolphins are there? There are somewhere between 40 to 50 kinds of dolphins. There are a total of 78 different kinds of cetaceans, whales, and dolphins combined. How far away can dolphins hear each other? Dolphins can hear each other from up to 2,500 feet away if there are no ships around. Dolphins are known to travel in packs. About how many are in these packs? Packs of dolphins are known as a pod. An average pod contains 10 dolphins. Pods have been known to roam the sea within literally thousands of others. Pods are mostly composed of females, while males often travel independently. Approximately how many dolphins are living today? More than a million common dolphins exist worldwide today. Again, this was 1995, so that number may have very well increased by then. About how big do dolphins get? Average dolphin's about 8 feet long. How much does a full-grown full dolphin weigh? Average dolphin weighs between 300 and 600 pounds. And finally, how much does a baby dolphin weigh at birth? A newborn dolphin is about 3 feet, or 1 meter, long, which is about a third of its mother's length, and weighs about 25 pounds. And then this is just the same one that I read before. And that's actually the entire... Those are all the facts. All the facts about dolphins. Yeah, so again, that's, that's one of the things that really lets you know that this game was designed for kids, man. <laughs> but still, it's pretty useful information if they want to genuinely learn more about dolphins. So, I mean, I'm not saying there's no reason for it to be in the game, but it's just, I don't know, it's just, it feels weird. Seeing this kind of stuff, not just in an Echo game, but just, you know, in a a Sega Genesis game in general. So if you want to know how exactly the exploratory mode works, I can show you how exactly it works. Oh, also, did I did I accidentally disable the music? Oh yeah, the password screen does get disabled if you're playing in exploratory mode, by the way, because you can't go left anymore. But that's okay, it wasn't really useful to begin with. Okay, so we're going to home C. 
Okay, no, I, I didn't disable the music. Yeah, so in exploratory mode, you are doing exactly that. You're actually just genuinely exploring uh, the ocean here, pretty much. You don't have any objectives whatsoever. You're just exploring the place, man. Just exploring the freaking place, and I, I actually, I don't... What exactly is my, my sonar hitting? My sonar is probably showing, like, the, uh... Yeah, the way, the way to, uh, to exit this particular area. Because you can actually go to the other areas as well. That is, if you can actually find the exit. But there is actually a way to leave here. Because not all of these levels are, are interconnected. Like, there are separate areas for some of the other levels. Yeah, like over here, I think, right? Yeah, there's Echo, by the way. There is Echo. Well, actually, wait, is the... No, it's not bouncing off of him. Okay, I'm assuming it's probably bounce, still bouncing off of the puffer fish, perhaps, but... Yeah, if we if we swim far enough to the right, eventually we will exit this particular area and move on to the next one. There's the seal playing with his bouncy ball. Yeah, there's the ring. Yeah, but you can see how... Yeah, there's the crabs as well, but you, you can see how a lot of these, uh... A lot of these levels actually encompass just one gigantic area. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can try and, like, jump over here. Oh, that was a majestic jump. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. So, if we, if we keep swimming to the right, hopefully, what in the world? I don't even know how I managed to accomplish that, but okay. Yeah, so, if we go far enough to the right, we eventually reach the volcanoes. So, this is the, the second area in the game, essentially. Yeah, with the creepy-ass eels. Yeah, so that's all you're doing here, and... Wow, okay, that's literally the entire area, apparently. Okay, Rocky Reef. Yeah, so if you just want to kind of explore the areas at your own leisure, just kind of like swim along, listen to uh, the, the music in the game. I will admit that some of the music in this game is like genuinely, uh, is genuinely groovy. Like, like, Echo Jr.'s soundtrack is actually quite good. Like, <laughs> it's kind of funny because, uh, oh actually, this must be where the, uh, the Aqua Maze was located. Okay, Aqua Maze is located in the Rocky Reef, apparently. Yeah, because these are all of the, uh, these are all of the, all the glyphs that I had to destroy in the second level. But yeah, Echo Jr. does have some genuinely good music, though. Like, there's one, there's one track in particular that, uh, I, I listen to off-screen, and I swear to God, it just sounds like a complete ripoff of What is Love by Hathaway. <laughs> Like, that's genuinely what it sounds like. It sounds so similar to that particular song, and I guess it does make sense, because again, this game came out in 1995. I'm pretty sure that song was still, like, extremely popular even back then, because I think What Is Love originally came out in 93? So I I'm pretty sure people still would have been listening to that song even around the time Echo Jr. came out. You know, that's the kind of music that was popular around this time. Or at least the kind of dance music, in particular. But yeah, I just found it so funny, because it just- it sounded almost exactly like- like What Is Love. I don't know if it's gonna play here in the Green Sea. Oh my god, it actually is playing in the Green Sea. Okay, hang on guys, listen to this for a minute. I want you to listen to this. I mean, it doesn't completely sound like what is love. I mean, in some ways, it does also kind of remind me of, uh, of a song from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. It, it does kind of remind me of Lava Reef Zone, in a way. It also does kind of remind me of that track as well, actually, so... I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like a straight-up, like, basically like a straight-up Eurodance song in an Echo game, of all things. So, yeah, I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. I mean... That, it's still probably, like, my most favorite song in this entire soundtrack, because it's still, it's still groovy, dude. It has a very unique sort of sound design that really is only possible to get on the Genesis. So yeah, I just, I just wanted to point that out quickly. Okay, so how, how exactly can I, can I get the freak out of here? I do believe there's only, like, 
I, I don't know, is it possible for me to get to the Endless Sea eventually, if I keep going far enough to the right? Yeah, all the items that you normally have to collect, uh, when you're playing, when you're playing the normal game mode here, uh, they're all still present on the map here, as you can see, because all the red rings are still here, and everything. And also those glyphs that we saw earlier. But I'm guessing that if we go far enough to the right, then hopefully we'll be in the Endless Sea. Oh yeah, there's, yeah, there's this freaking crystal again. Yeah, and I, again, I don't, I don't know what your purpose is, though. What exactly is your purpose? I don't understand. Like, it doesn't, it, the game does not explain what exactly you're supposed to be at all. Yeah, if we go... Oh, we actually can't go further to the right. Oh, it, it doesn't let us travel to the Endless Sea, I guess. Alright. Well, then I imagine we could probably... Yeah, I guess, I guess that's just where our journey ends then. Okay, frick it. <laughs> yeah, I imagine, I imagine if we, uh, if we go back to the left, though. If we go back to the left, we probably can, uh, go back to some of the previous areas. Okay, well, I guess in that case, uh, I think we're pretty much done here, then. Because <laughs> that's all I really wanted to show off in Echo Jr. I mean, we beat the entire game, guys. Like, that's it. We're done here. So, I'm ending the video. Frick it. Yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to show off in this game. That's pretty much everything that I can show you guys. So, that was the entire game. It's a very short Echo game. Again, I think it's pretty obvious that this was designed for children. It was definitely not designed with diehard Echo fans in my end. But again, I can understand if they wanted to try... I, I know I sound like a broken record saying this, but I get it if they wanted to try and make a more accessible Echo game. But it does feel like it was made specifically for really young kids. But I guess, if you do have a child and you want to introduce them to Echo the Dolphin, it's probably a good idea to, like, start them off on this game first. Just to, like, start them off on Echo Jr. Just to have them get used to the controls and get used to how, you know, Echo controls and moves around. Because even in this game, Echo still moves really damn fast. And it can be really difficult to control him at such extreme speeds. And I do think the exploratory mode would actually be perfect for that. So, you know, have them learn the controls, have them get used to the controls. I mean, the only issue, of course, is that... Uh, you don't have your dash attack in Echo Jr., because that's the dash, that's the attack that you normally use to kill enemies. But you can't kill any enemies in Echo Jr., because there technically are none. So that's, that's the only issue there, but, you know, it also introduces you the sonar, or like it, it shows you how to use the sonar as well, which is also present in the original Echo and also the Tide to Tie Him. So yeah, if you want to introduce your kids to Echo, um, definitely start them on this game first. Don't just throw them directly into uh, the original Echo the Dolphin, because you're actually a monster if you do that. <laughs> and as much as I complained about Echo the Dolphin being way too difficult, I'm not entirely a fan of this particular game either, because I feel like this one in particular is way too easy. So, I'm hoping that the Tides of Time will find a way to strike the perfect balance between challenging and accessibility. <laughs> Because as much as I wanted to love Echo the Dolphin, the intense difficulty of that particular game just made it pretty much impossible for me to do so. Not to mention the fact that every time you die, you go back to the very start of the level, because there's no checkpoints in any of the levels. So I'm hoping that Echo the Tides of Time will be, at least, somewhat more accessible. I'm not saying it needs to be, like, you know, full-on easy mode like Echo Jr., but just... Like, I hope that it will be challenging, obviously, but I hope that it won't be so challenging to the point where I just feel like I'm torturing myself for absolutely no reason. So I'm really hoping that the Tides of Time will finally win me over and make me believe in... Echo the Dolphin. I mean, to be fair, I don't hate Echo the Dolphin at all. I can definitely see the appeal of the game, and I can definitely see why it, it has become a cult classic in recent years. But at the same time, I kind of feel like Echo the Dolphin has pretty much the same problem that a lot of Sonic games have, where he's just too fast, man! Everything happens too damn fast! 
But we'll see what the Tides of Time is like. I am definitely going to be doing a video on that next, because I would like to try and see if I can close out the remainder of the original Echo Trilogy on the Genesis. So do be on the lookout for that next. And not only that, but it's been a really long time since I played a Sega Genesis game on the channel. I don't think I played a Genesis game on my channel since I played Alien Storm, which was all the way back in February? Because... It's almost the end of 2021 already. I don't know how the hell that happened, but yeah, it's almost the end of the year. And I do want to mention as well, by the way, that this is actually going to be the second to last video that I upload uh, before I go on my holiday break, because I do plan on taking a break uh, sometime in the middle of December again, just like I did last year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I definitely took a break in the middle of last year. Well, technically I didn't, because I was also working on that special end-of-the-year video that I uploaded in 2020, but this time I think I am just going to take it easy completely, because I don't really have a special end-of-the-year video plan for this year. I think what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to take it easy, like hang out with my family for the holiday is, and yeah, I'm just going to rest for a little while. But this is not going to be the last video that I upload. The next video that goes live after this will be the last one. And I already mentioned that I wanted to play the last two games from Vector Park in a double feature. And that's what the next video is going to be. So the last video of the year is going to be a double feature containing the remainder of Vector Park's games. The remainder of the ones that I still need to cover on the channel. And then after that... I'm gonna be done for the rest of the year, so... This is the penultimate video that I will be uploading for 2021, and the finale will be coming... maybe in the next few days after this. And usually with all the end of the year videos, I like to go a little more in depth about, uh, you know, how exactly the year panned out for the channel, what I managed to accomplish, and how I... how... how well I feel I did in terms of, like, how many videos I uploaded and the overall quality of the videos, I'll probably talk in more detail about that in the next video. For now, I am just going to end this video here. If you want to play Echo Jr., you can actually buy this game on Steam. I think it only costs one dollar. Yeah, I don't exactly know if the game is necessarily worth picking up, though, especially if you're, like, a hardcore Echo fan, but, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's more of a curiosity than anything else. I would still recommend that you play either Echo the Tides of Time or the original Echo. But if you do want to check it out for yourself, the link is in the description. And I do believe Echo Jr. was also featured on the Sega Genesis Classics compilation for consoles, uh, that being PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch specifically. So I do believe you can also check that game out on that compilation as well. Uh, I'm not going to link to that specific compilation, though, because that also contains, like, 50 other games on it. If you want to just purchase Echo Jr. specifically, then I will provide the link to the game on Steam, so you can go and purchase that and play it on PC. Again, it's only $1, so if you just want to check it out as more of a curiosity kind of thing, then, yeah, you're not wasting too much money doing that, so that's a good thing, at least. Anyway, guys, thank you as always for watching, and I will see you in the next video I make. Later!